don't know how well you can hear that. But we got a rapid boil going on there. When you're making this sort of spruce tip tea, you want to put it in fairly, fairly uh, dense, like put a lot in if you want to get flavor. Actually, not bad, you know, really. Hey, it's Greg here with Outdoors on the Cheap, and today I'm going to talk about heating water in a water bottle and uh, a little mod I've done to mine to make it just easier to do. Uh, so I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to fill it up with water here in the stream and, and bring it to a boil and, and show you how this all works. Uh, but I'm going to explain it, the first little part, just to, just to show you how, how simple this modification is. Um, so, you know, a lot of uh, survival manuals and that sort of thing recommend uh, bringing a water bottle like this along when you go in the woods. And it's handy because it's small. You can fit it, you know, you can fit it in a pocket, you can fit it in a game bag, you can fit it in a backpack. It's just versatile, right? And uh, most of them have... Uh, plastic caps like this so this has to be removed when you're boiling the water but then the question is when I'm boiling this uh, do I sort of set it in the fire half sideways which you can do but then you're always worried about it tipping or you're losing your water that sort of thing it can be tedious if you're putting snow into it and that sort of thing so the simplest little mod ever that I've come up with is to just uh, put a little bit of you know snare wire bailing wire whatever you want to call that just wire I just have that around the spout for when you need it, right? And all you do is you just, I've got a little loop already in it there. But you just put the wire through the loop and uh, cinch that up around the, around the mouth of the bottle, <laughs> right? And now you can hang that off a stick over the fire, <laughs> right? Just, you just prop a little, jam a little stick in the ground, wrap it around a couple times, right? Because it's wire, right? And just... Let it go like that, right? It's also handy for you when you're getting water out of a stream because you don't have to bend right down and get that right down there. You can sort of just put it around your, your finger, right? And get that in the stream. A lot of times when you're trying to get water out of a stream, it's that extra foot you reach that makes you slip and fall into the river, which is not good. Uh, so let's get some water here and then uh, let's boil her up. Come on. So we got a little creek here. It doesn't look like much, but if I were to try to walk across this thing, I'd probably sink down up to my chest. Right, it's it's like a foot deep, but there's like this mushy stuff that just goes on forever. Uh, and even it's hard to judge where to step when you're close to the shore. It's very boggy here. Right, so advantage of having something like this, I don't have to get that close. <laughs> right, there we go. On my water. That's enough for today. All right, so we've got a, what appears to be a decent place to make a fire. I'm sitting a little bit too close right now, but we're gonna go in, and I'll back off a little bit. Uh, just gonna use my stick lighter to get this going today. Got some uh, stuff I just snapped off some trees. Stuff's all over the place, and it may never ceases to amaze me. Um, you know, we've had a lot of rain here the last few days, and uh, it was raining yesterday, and it's sunny this morning. And this stuff's probably dry enough to light as is, just a lighter. I may need, uh, you know, some birch bark or something a bit more, uh, something a bit more fanciful. We'll see how she goes. This should work. There's some old man's beard in there and some different things, you know, in, in with the, uh, in with the, uh, spruce boughs. All right. Put that there, I guess. Keep adding stuff on there and hopefully she, she catches good. People don't move fires around enough when they're lighting them. You gotta sort of follow the flame a bit. You lose your fire. You gotta be quick when you need to be quick. Fire seems to want to go this way, so I'll Put the unburny, not burned stuff on top of the burned stuff. I mean, this is just a quick, quick fire in the woods, right? Just throwing something together. So for whatever reason you want a hot cup of tea or, or you're thirsty and you want some water and you don't have any water and all you've got is creek water, right? You, uh, you go drinking water out of creeks 
you think you're some sort of expert of, on what water is safe and what water isn't safe, you're probably going to learn the hard way that you don't know much about water. <laughs> I can say that because I learned the hard way. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I got uh, either a or a coli once uh, from just drinking river water, thinking I was some sort of expert on the topic. All right, so I'm just going to wrap my... Uh, I'll bring the camera in so you can see a bit closer in a second. Just gonna wrap my uh, thing around there. I mean, you can you can stand and hold it like you're fishing, of course. And that's one way to you know while you're. I mean, this fire is still sort of settling out, and deciding where it wants to burn. And like I said, if you're in a situation where you want some water to drink quickly. You can just hold it over there like a fishing rod. Once the fire burns down to like where it has a sort of center of heat, then you probably want to put the stick in the ground and just use it to suspend the bottle. Right? But right now, just with the bottle as is, there's no way I could, uh, you know, be uh, heating, heating the bottle <laughs> this quickly, this rapidly, right? And I'm in all I got uh, just this little thin wire. And sure, the wire isn't reusable. It will only last so long. It's only got so many, so many uses in it. But I mean, you can replace it, right? The main thing is you've got it there for when you want it. You're in the woods. You want some a hot drink or a tea, or you got maybe you got a kid with you, and uh, the kid's getting a bit, uh, you know, cranky, and you give him a little hot chocolate and cheers him up. You know, uh, you know, it's, it's really if you take kids in the woods. Uh, the most important thing you can do is at moments when you have them in the woods, make sure to remind them that the trip is all about them. <laughs> it's not about you, it's about them, right? Um, that goes a long way into building the, the good memories. And uh, they'll they forget about the bad stuff. If They'll probably only remember that you made them hot chocolate once because they were cold. They won't remember anything else about the trip. All the stuff that's important to you, they're not going to remember that. They're going to remember that you made them hot chocolate when they were cold and cheered them up. Maybe told them a little story or whatever. Right? Okay, so now the fire is sort of behaving a bit. So I can drive the stick into the ground. Doesn't want to go in there. There we go. Let's see here. Oh. There we go. Okay, now I, now I can just uh, bring the camera along here and show you what I'm doing. So now with my walking stick, or any old stick, right, I can just move the fire around the can. Now that I've got the fire going really good, all the wood's dried out nicely, and the wood's behaving for me, like proper fuel, right? Now I can, instead of moving the bottle to the heat, I can move the heat to the bottle. And I don't gotta stand there like I'm fishing for, fishing for smoke sort of thing, right? Just gonna adjust here a little bit. Get rid of the smoke. You stand too close to a fire, the smoke will always follow you. You know, people think, oh, the smoke's always following me. It's, it's, uh, you know, bad luck. No, it's physics. The smoke's following you because you're creating a, a kind of vacuum. Um, so, uh, you know, don't stand too close to the fire. Now, right now, this, this, there's wind and it's basically shifting constantly. But yeah, generally speaking, you should be a, at least a stride away from the fire and it will tend not to follow you around and the smoke will tend not to come towards you. Um, so, you know, another way to keep that simple is just have a, a little stick like this, right? That way you don't have to be near the fire. But see how I've moved the fire around the bottle. Right, so I didn't have to spend it, I mean, basically it took me a minute to gather the wood and I just, you know, lit stuff with a big lighter and started throwing wood on there. Um, you know, if you're just making a quick, you know, take a little break, you know, a little, you know, a little forest coffee break type, uh, type thing, or if you're making a little quick fire like that, it doesn't have to be a big, big operation, especially this time of year when everything's wet, everything's cold, the risk of forest fire is, you know, pretty close to zero. You know, all the rules are different in the spring and the summer and stuff like that. You got to be really worried about catching the forest on fire. At this time of year, everything's wet and everything's cold, and uh, you know it becomes uh, 
that you might even you might even call it fire season <laughs> because it's a good time of year for fires now the stick i got this thing hand, hanging from is a, a a sapling right so that's a i think it's maple just green wood right so it won't catch on fire you could use you know just a dry branch off of off a spruce tree or whatever um, and it probably will not catch if it's far enough from the fire but you don't want to take that risk I mean, if that's all you got, use it and just be careful. Just just got, protect it from the fire sort of thing, right? I'm just going to look down the bottle there to see if it's boiling yet. We're almost boiling. We're almost there. It's starting to make a, a kind of boiling sound. Now, if you're bringing a little kit like this with kids, uh, actually, the dollar store I found has cups that fit right over the end of this perfectly um, so bring a cup right so that they can drink out of a cup it's good to have a cup anyway for lots of different reasons it's another useful tool if you can find a, a little metal or plastic cup that fits perfectly over the end of your water bottle uh, it's not going to take up any more room right but it allows you to, to comfort you know if you have someone with you they're not experienced in the woods so on and so forth it just allows you to do that you know often oftentimes when i'm in the woods um you know, I take a, a big drink of water before I leave. I'm going in the woods for four hours. I don't, you know, this might sound crazy, but I don't usually bring water with me. I drink a lot of water and I just go. But I'll have something like this empty in my kit in case I get really, you know, for whatever reason, something goes wrong, I've got the water. Now, that's not, probably not the best advice, but, you know, if I go in the woods for the afternoon, I usually don't bring a bottle of water. You know, I, I come home a bit thirsty, but, you know, you're not going to die of dehydration in four hours. It's ridiculous, especially if you're well hydrated going into it. Um, so why carry all the weight? Carry the means to make water when you need it. And I'm saying that as a person who lives in a province where water is pretty much everywhere. You don't have to walk far to find water. Um, but uh, that's almost boiling now. So I'm just continuing to adjust the fire. Move it around. Here, let's get that from a different angle. Right, I'm moving the fire so that it's getting the most heat to that thing. Might be useful for me to, uh, oh, it's, it's boiling, yeah. So we've got, I don't know how well you can hear that. We've got a rapid boil going on there. I don't want to wreck the camera. Um, so I'm just going to let that boil for about a minute. And then uh, I'll catch up with you then. While it's finishing boiling, I was just looking around to see if I could find some uh, Labrador tea. There's a there's a bush that grows here that looks looks like Labrador tea. This resembles it but it's not labrador tea and as far as i know it's uh poisonous to some extent i don't know how much it would take to kill you but uh anyway this is not labrador tea i wish i could find some but the, the interesting thing is you can usually find if you see this stuff you can usually find labrador tea it's usually they like the same ecology they like the same sort of place so i was looking around just trying to find some uh labrador tea sort of looks like these but the leaves are thicker and they have this furry stuff on the underside and of course it's got a sort of uh lemony smell i thought maybe i could find some here but i don't see any here anyway so i just settled for some of this uh i think this is black spruce um spruce tip tea nice tea to make let's go back to the fire it's just right over here Okay, that's burned down nicely. That was about, you know, we were away from the camera for not too long. Uh, so now I'll just break these up. You don't want to put them in the wrong size. You'll, you'll never get them back out. <laughs> but uh, just put, put some of these in. Like so. Well, I'm not doing a good job of holding the camera here. I'm trying to <laughs> show you what I'm doing as I'm doing it. When you're making this sort of spruce tip tea, you want to... Put it in fairly, at least in my experience, fairly uh, dense. Like put a lot in if you want to get flavor. It is, to me anyway, uh, preferable to water because uh, it just got some flavor. It's got a little bit of, I don't know, vitamins in it. Uh, you know, so uh, I'm just going to let that sit there for a minute and just cool off a little bit. And I'll just... You know enjoy the scenery here it's a beautiful day out in the woods it's uh, a Sunday here and uh, most of the time 
uh, in Sunday on Sunday here where I live you you can't hunt and I'm not hunting out here I'm just out out scooting around making some videos and just you know scouting around looking at stuff uh, which is <laughs> sometimes I enjoy that more than the hunting to tell you the truth um, I love it just exploring in the woods using my compass making a little fire having a little tea that sort of thing I enjoy I enjoy every part of it sort of thing right I love taking my kids out in the woods um, but uh, yeah um, for most of hunting season with a couple exceptions here where I live uh, You can hunt on Sunday and a lot of people get really bent out of shape. I mean uh, people I mean hunters um, Get really bent out of shape over that rule And I mean the argument is that the places where people are hunting there's a uh, You know people aren't going for walks and generally, generally speaking they're correct the Places where people hunt isn't where people go and walk their dog and do stuff like that Right, uh, you, if you're hunting, you don't want any people around because they ruin everything. They make noise and they ruin everything. You know, animals are afraid of people, so you, you basically avoid the places where people go for walks and stuff. You don't want to be in hiker country. You want to be in hunting country in the thick woods where there isn't nice trails, right? Where you know it's treacherous and it's easy to fall down and all that sort of stuff. Um, but all of that being said, I, I'm perfectly fine with having one day a week where you can't. Um, you know, you can't be in here shooting stuff. Um, you know, I like to take my kids in the woods It's nice to have one day a week where you don't I mean, I've got my orange out here today But primarily because I was shooting a video and I was talking about that equipment earlier today um, I didn't really don't need to wear hunters orange today as far as I understand it um, So it's you know, I mean, it's always a good thing to do because if you get lost you know, you're, you're gonna be easier to be found right especially if you're bringing kids in the woods It's good to give them at the very least an orange hat Because um, they tend to you know go missing <laughs> They tend to run off <laughs> and they're small, right? Um, they might think it's a game, but uh, it's not a game to you when they go missing. So it's good to make them visible. Um, but yeah, I'm per perfectly fine with having, you know, um, one day where, you know, the woods are basically firearm free. It's it's nice. Uh, it gives you more options and so on. But, you know, people, this is a, a debate that people get pretty uh, hot and bothered over. So I'm not going to get into it too much. Uh, I don't know how hot this is. <laughs> It's probably damn hot. <laughs> it's gonna take a minute. I'm gonna turn the camera off, come back to you when this is drinkable. All right, so we got the fire under control and that's all sort of put away. And uh, it still seems pretty damn hot, but uh, I'm not the toughest guy in the world when it comes to hot drinks. But uh, let me just uh, give her a go here. You can tell there's a lot of, you know, you can see the, the spruce in there, <laughs> right? And it smells, uh, it smells like well, it smells like like furniture cleaner. <laughs> well, it's, I've had it before. It's been a while. It's probably been two years since I've had it. Yeah, I mean, it's really hot, right? But it's um, very piney. Uh, and it's not pine, it's spruce, but it's a very woodsy sort of taste. It's supposed to be good for you, you know? I mean, I don't know what, 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 uh, what dosage is too much, right? You know, really, I know I just had Earl Grey tea last night. It doesn't taste like Earl Grey, but it kind of has a bit of a an essence of that in a sense, right? It definitely, and here's the point, and the reason I found something to stick in the water. Uh, that creek there is basically bog water. It's got a peaty taste. It does not taste good. Never tastes good. Does not, it's not fresh, clean mountain water sort of thing. It's bog water, right? So, um, you know, if I drank it, I mean, it's it's relatively cold. I don't know what you know what 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 the probability would be for me getting sick from it, but it's bog water. Um, but when I boil it, it's safe. But it's got this really peaty, boggy, um, you know, taste. It, it doesn't taste good. It's it, if you look at it, if you have a clear glass and you look at it, it's it's basically the color of tea. <laughs> it's brown. It's brown water, right? So. Um, yeah, it's, it's good to have a little bit of, uh, you know, sense of bush lore to find things you can put in there to sort of give the water a little bit of flavor because it's not, it's not enjoyable to drink. I mean, if you're really thirsty, anything will do. And, you know, if you're extremely thirsty, you don't care what it tastes like because you just want water, right? But, uh, yeah, this isn't that bad, actually. You know, the last time I did this, maybe I used a different tree. But this one here, it was like a, almost like a blue-green with um, the... The, the, the needles are like fingers. Uh, so some needle fingers are flat, but this one here was sort of rounded. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's the black spruce, and I'm pretty sure that's one of the ones that are recommended for spruce tip tea.
actually not bad you know really I mean I'm really hungry right now so maybe it tastes extra good because I'm really hungry <laughs> I maybe if I had it side by side with a cup of tea uh, I would prefer the tea because I like tea. I, I drink tea I drink tea and coffee but this is not you know really it's not bad yeah <laughs> not bad at all actually <laughs> the last time I had this I didn't enjoy it I just sort of drank it to drink something Certainly better than that nasty water down there. Anyway, if you've got a water bottle and you want to boil water, you know, just bring a little bit of any kind of wire, right? Just wrap some wire around the spout. Use an elastic band to sort of keep it under control. And you've just got it there for when you need it. You can only reuse it so many times as it'll bend and break. But you can use this many times, right? And when it breaks, you can just tie it on again. But it just makes it so much easier, as you saw. Uh, and in terms of if you want to get that water boiled quick, you start off holding the stick out just like a little fishing rod, right? And sort of move, kicking the fire around with your feet until the fire's sort of got a center of heat, a center of flame. Once you see that happening, then you affix the bottle over the flame and you use another stick to sort of just, you know, bring the wood in around the fire. Well, once it's gotten to that point, the wood's dried out and it behaves better and burns better. Right? You bring that in around the fire until you see it boiling. And I just used the lower branches off of spruce trees here. Nothing special after days and days of lousy weather and rain and stuff like that. All the rivers and everything's sort of flooded. All the water's high right now because you've had a lot of rain. You can always find something, especially if you're in a sort of thicker, this isn't super thick for us, but uh, usually there's places you can just find where it's not so bad. So anyway, water bottle, wire attached, easy to boil. Uh, a great little way to just get a little water and get a little break and warm yourself up and and uh, improve your spirits when you're when you're out in the woods uh, just enjoying nature. So, if you found that interesting, if you did, please like, share, subscribe. And until next time, enjoy the outdoors on the cheap. Thanks for watching.